welcome back everybody now we're going to be really going into the details of how the lower unity works and how the world works and the greatness of of divinity and how he's in charge of everything and how we really um it's easier to put our trust in him when we understand how everything works. So, so um, let's read. Ma'ata Yuvan, and from now, after all these previous chapters, now in the 44th chapter, we can understand Gamken Church in his Chalklis, the Oisius. Now, Ahamachshava, uh, that, that the power to divide thought and how we have it in our brains that's how what divides up reality the fact that we can see different things in the world and different objects even though there's only one oneness that's similar to the that how that's similar to the mechanism that we have in our own brains how thoughts is divided from five powers they're called five powers called mansapach these are specific hebrew letters that have a final letter in other words when they come at the end of a word they change and they have a special final letter uh no so so this power to divide up thought can is works is in the essential uh, thought except uh, essential thought in the essence of god and then as things um, start to form so it's machshaba doma the original uh, thought which is right before tzimtzum and after tzimtzum and then there's the machshaba stima there adam kadmin then there's the hidden thought of Adam Kadmein, the original man, in other words, the when God um, decides to create a character that's going to tell the, his story, Varechanpin and long faces, big dreams, right? That's next level. There's thoughts there also. Albechines Machshava Dezah. Until we have the Machshava small faces, which means a practical um, divinity is is form is formatted in a way that we would be able to relate to Adarachanal and everything like we mentioned above. In other words, it exists on all levels. We practice Ainyan Adam, Ainyan Ba Adam Atachton Shishers His Chalkos Atzurufim. The source of the ability to divide up thought comes from higher than the cognition. Like we mentioned before, that a, a child under two has the power of cognition, but they don't speak. And, um, but they don't speak. However, um, the power to divide up that cogn cognition, to be able to create words, actually comes from higher than cognition, higher from, from um, Bina. You know, if, if AI would be able to do this, they would have to like have like a divine, <laughs> you need help from Hashem to be able to do these things because this is the way a brain works. We don't just have comprehension. We have some higher power which allows us to, to divide up words. This idea is the idea in a Torah. I've written a bunch of Sifrei Torah by hand. Um, and what's really interesting, that experience is very interesting because I end up appreciating how certain paragraphs um, have a break in the middle. A new paragraph starts with like a break in the middle of a, of a, of, of a line. And sometimes you break and then you start a new paragraph at the beginning of the line. And that's the difference between, well, that may be the difference between my Pasos and Maimer Pasos, but that's not what it means over here, as far as I know. What it means is Maimer Sasum means that it's a hidden statement, like you don't know who the author is. Just somebody starts speaking. Maimer Pasos is, uh, open Maimer is that the, author of the mimer the is is giving himself like like his identity for example and god said to moses saying right god said to moses saying means it's mimer pasuch it's open who the author it's clear who the author of the statement is my is it's not written in the torah who the author of this statement is it's just like fact you know 
For example, a maimer pasuch is and God spoke. And God spoke. But elikim over here, aleph lamed is power. Elikim uh, yud mem is more power of more than one. So it means the power of powers. And it's five letters. And they're five different letters. And so to be able to the now the energy comes down according to the shape of the letter and the way the message comes down is all different types of ways of rearranging these letters and all the different possibilities of energy of energy would be one times two times three times four times five huh one times two times t, so it somehow ends up 120. Wait, it's a 120 or this 120 kufches. How do you get to have or five to the power of five? So how how is how, well, how do you get 120? Five times five. No. Is, is I, 120 the number that you want? Or what you're, yeah, I want to get to 120. Somehow he's explaining that Alakim, because it's five letters, it ends up a hundred and, uh, 120 possibilities. Sirofim. 120. How does it, how do you get a five out of that? Yes, I just did it on my calculator. One times two times three times four times five is 120. Hmm. One times two times three. So there's, there's, uh, there's, so that there is um, 120 possibilities over here. Serial film, the Machshava Stima in the hidden thought, Shibatmos in the essence of God Mamish, because basically God takes his own name and he just like rearranges it in different ways, and that's how we get all the powers of the world. And Nikra Maimer Sasum, Shibatmos Stima to call Stimim. If you don't know the author, that's considered a Maimer Sasum, a hidden statement in the essence. Uh, the hidden of all hiddens. Where is that? Stima the call stimin. That was in Adam Kadmein. Uh, it wasn't a specific place. It was Adam Kadmein or before Adam Kadmein. Maybe it was the Kesser of, of maybe it was the Kesser of Adam Kadmein. Probably. Stima the call stimin, the hidden of all hiddens. Adrum Amilus, and it goes on higher. Like everything that exists in this world exists on a higher level, all the way to Latmos. Kamai El Kim Heavy Darka. God understands the way. Etc. And by the way, what is Elikim? Elikim means God basically only revealing himself partially. Um, that's what God is. God is the idea of partial, partial revelation to allow for things to exist, to make space for things. That's, that's what Elikim is, you're saying? Yeah. That's what Elikim in general means. Yeah, Vestakos and, and like a apparent lessening of energy like it seems like the energy sort of absorb itself into itself and therefore lower levels of energy can be revealed and then for that allows the power that allows for a story to happen like the rabbis say in the beginning god decided it went up in god's mind to this to create the world to create with the power of focus, Midas Adin, the power of judgment, the power of focus, Shu Shem Elikim, which actually is the name of God. But then later on, um, later on, he realized that, well, he, he established that for the world to continue, there needs to be compassion. So he added to the Elikim, which is judgment, he added compassion, which is Havaya. And basically, what is symptom? That means his chalkos, the division of different types of variations, combinations, tirufe of letters in the hidden thought, gamkain also. In other words, that's also included with what, what's happening. Uh, like it says, according to the uh, Aramaic translation of onkos, which is also explanation, gracious bekadmin, he translates, uh, the first word of the Bible 
in the beginning, he translates Bikadmin with this Kadmin power, this earlier, Kadmin is earlier, Shehu Ratzan HaKadim, which means with Hashem's want, Hainu Ratzan Shemachshav Akduma, in other words, God's want in his original thought, that's what creates the world. Chulav Nikra Bechines Elokim Bechines HaTzimtzum, Vizchalkos, and it's called the power of, um, of the Almighty, which is the idea of actually with strain, with, with strange, strained, with strained. Vizchalkos and the idea of let's let's divide up energies, Lefi, Maimer Azal, like the rabbis say, the British is Nami Maimer, that God created the world with 10 sayings. And the, and the first one in the, in the beginning of everything, God created on the beginning of the creation of the heaven and the earth, right? That is also one of the 10 statements that creates the world. Uh, who, it's actually um, a hidden um, mimer, meaning to say that the, that the author is not, the author is not identified. It says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So who's the author? Who, who said the statement? The author is unidentified. That's called mimer sosom. That's refer that actually connects to a hidden thought, and and everything that exists on a lower level exists on a higher higher level until the simple thought in the essence canal, and it's known that elikim elikim the Almighty those words can also be rearranged to me Ayla, because Elohim is really a hey, right? We just don't want to write God's name. So it's actually me Ayla, who are these? What do you mean, who are these? Who are these things of creation, right? Shehu bechinas his chalkos mi bara Ayla, which is that's the idea of dividing up the various creations in the world and, and that you can wonder who created this? Who is the author of this of this creation? Hulu. Velkim ila bina o machshava stima the arachanpin. The higher almighty, the higher almighty is uh, bina. Oh, so so when we say the Almighty, it, it uh, there's the Almighty. The name can be on many levels. So on, on a higher level, Elikim is Bina. It refers to God's comprehension, Amachshava Stima, and also God's hidden thought, the Arich Anpin of the uh, long faces, and higher by Adam Kadmin, the original man, the original character, Chulu, etc. Elikim Tata and God, the Almighty, the way it's referring to on a low, lower level, Bichinas Malchus, that's really capturing God's expression, which is the Tfuna. Oh my, uh, oh, can't say Malchus the Tfuna, the expression of Tfuna. So the higher Elohim is objective comprehension, and the lower Elohim is the expression of subjective comprehension. Valeya and Leia is audible thought. So there is an interface between Elikim Ila, the higher Elikim. It's all one, but it's like different facets of the same of divinity. How it interfaces with uh, uh, subjective. It's like I can think objectively, and I hopefully, and I can think subjectively. So it's all me. So that so, but. How, you know, how are we going to call that? So Elohim Ila is when God's thinking objectively. Elohim Tata is how God's expressing how he's thinking subjectively. And then it becomes cognitive thought, Valeya. The commission goes of Zera, like it's written in the Zayar, the Lamed base Vayem Elohim, in the creation of the universe, there's 32 times we, we are the statement of, and God said, and the Almighty said, that's mentioned 32 times, which that's Hain Lamed Beis Shvilin, the uh, demis patrin bebina. It actually that refers to thirty-two different paths of comprehension that are opened up in comprehension. Bina shekulam bechinas may masasan, and all of them are really um, a, a a really a expression of God, which is sasan hidden. It's not. We don't know the. Um, 
we don't know the author, the Dibur of this, of the statement. So basically when we don't know the author of the statement, we're speaking about thought and objective thought. And when we do know, we're speaking about subjective thought. So let's, let's look down. I can't read further because I just don't see it on my page. So that, in other words, the, the, the words inside objective thought then becomes the thought that is going to power speech, God's speech. The Malchus, which the Malchus is God being a king, God expressing himself, that, it actually, that is called an open statement. An open statement means that we that the author is identified. Like we explained in the idea of an open mem and a closed mem. So what I what we what we have is a is a course um, that in about nine hours um, we. In, in nine hours, we taught somebody to learn, read Lashon HaKadosh, Hebrew, from not, being, not knowing anything. And uh, in that course, we also spoke about different letters. And over here is a source about the difference between a mem sucha and open mem and mem, um, a mem stoma, a, a closed mem, and a mem sucha and an open mem. And we see this is the difference. An open mem refers to when the author of the statement is identified, is speaking, and a closed mem refers to when the author is unidentified because it's thought. It's thought. It's totally thought. The source of the power of this division, Avbishu Ba even though um, it comes through tzimtzum, in other words, God needs to focus himself, to withhold himself in order to communicate to this ability to divide up thought is actually higher than the source of Comprehension on its own, objective comprehension. The commission goes like it's written in the Zayar and the Zayar al Apasuk on the verse, Vakal Ater Nishma Barteno. The voice of the dove is heard in, in, in the land. And this is code for Ter is Yesaid, and it's heard in our land, which is Malchus. And he's going to explain a different. It's actually the voice of reason. That it's now heard. How the voice of reason is heard because it can be divided up into different combinations. Through the five powers of division. And these powers actually come higher, uh, higher than comprehension. Alma de Scalia, when the, the when a person intends to bring the speech into a revealed manner, which is the land, that's when this higher power um, manifests. The canal, like we've mentioned in previous chapters, by Riches at length and Marshall, Atinic from the uh, metaphor of a child that a child doesn't have the ability to divide up things divide up the puzzle in order to be able to reconnect in different ways only when he starts speaking. That's interesting. I, I wonder, you know, probably before two years old, they can't make Lego, right? Their own Lego things. Well, they won't have the code. Do they build blocks before two years old? The kids build blocks. It's an interesting thing to see. Because, because that is the idea of being able to divide and build. And that, that only comes from, that he's saying that that comes from the power of speech. 
when a person has this amazing ability of connecting random sounds with meaning, meaningful words, this comes from inside the right brain. It actually comes from the innermost aspect of Chachma, that it can connect things that don't connect really and make them symbolize each other. That's when the power comes to be able to divide and connect the power of the letters of thought from the inner and the source. I, can I see further? Uh, the Bina of Bina. So what's happening over here is speech activates the right brain, the, the deepest aspects of the right brain to be able to connect random things that don't connect and say that they they will represent each other. That's what awakens, it seems what awakens the deepest part of Bina of comprehension, which allows for division of thought. It's important that kids learn how to write because then they can divide their thoughts in a in a in a in a um, in a um, organized fashion. The dafka uh, so that that when they start doing that, that actually awakens an inner chachma. The dafka kach is a tzir who begins mocking the bina, and what and enables the wordsmithing is the source of comprehension. However, the actual words, the actual words chosen is going to be smithed and worded according to the intent of these uh, subject at hand, the prat in, in specific parts. According to the focus of the thought, Hayunis delving thought, which actually organizes the different ways we choose words, etc., like we mentioned before. And this is the idea of mem psocha, the an open speaking mem. In other words, the author the of the statement is identified and is able to speak, and that's when the greater powers manifest. In, in comprehension itself, there is a hidden mem, a closed square mem, mem psucha, and an open mem. Shunikra maimer sasu maimer psuch, which actually represents the idea of a of a statement which we don't know the author maimer psuch, an open statement, which means we do know the author of the statement. They they are openly identifying themselves themselves. You call maimer who begins the bemachshava de bina ma atma. Any time there's a statement made, it actually comes from the thoughts of comprehension itself. And by the way. By the way, there is a context which is called makifim of comprehension. Uh, comprehension sets context, and that is considered a mem stuma, meaning to say, when you say a statement, there is a hidden context, and that is the closed mem, the square closed mem. That's the hidden context. that surrounds like a square from all sides to this Indian beribua. Tavka, and it's specifically square, like it's written on the Zaira, Al Mem, the Lamarbe Hamisra. There is a pasuk where uh, on these words, Lamarbe Hamisra, that you have a Mem in the middle of the word, which is actually square. Yes, we write it square, completely closed. And there's a lot of meaning in that because in the future, that's the type of men we'll be using. Uh, and, explained, and it's explained in another place. Um, the, the difference between the, the square of comprehension and when this square context of comprehension when it actually activates to create division through the five gvuras 
called Mansapach, Shu'inyan Mem Pesucha, which that becomes an open Mem, Maim Pesuch, a statement where we know the author because uh, that because he's active. Shamachshava Stuma Nasis. Can we can we go down further? Sucha, that there's, the process is that the hidden thought actually becomes revealed through different words, myth, combinations of words, and that's the shape. You see, he's saying that the shape of the word holds meaning, and the shape of the open mem is the idea that it's like a mouth opening up to say a statement, kedua, like it's not. So the shape of a closed mem is a square, and that is the makif, the context of comprehension. And that's why a sukkah is generally square with four walls, tzitzits are square. And we've mentioned this many times before, that the difference between a makif, a context which is circular, and a context which is square, in a square, the corners of the square are further away from the center than the walls. And the walls, um, the walls are, are it, it represents the idea of, of when you understand an idea, there's certain parts of an idea which are closer to you and there are certain things of the idea which are further for you, which you less understand. So the corners represent how you less understand certain things and the walls which are closer to you represent that you are have a firmer grip and you have a more concrete understanding re regards to certain things. And that's why the makif, the, the context, the, the surrounding of a of Bina is like a closed mem sosum, like a closed mem, which is a, like a shape of a square. And so to the tzitzis a square, so to a, a sukkah is square. Now, uvirad varim, and, and the explanation of this matter is, hine yidu, it's known, bebir inyan makif in the Bina. When we analyze the whole idea of, of the context of the surrounding energy of comprehension, there is a verse which has a hidden meaning uh, regarding how a mother chick sits on the little small chickens, the big chicken, big mummy chicken sits on the big on the small chicks. Sorry, big mummy chicken sits on the small chicks. I pray him. Shamides, who are the chicks? So he says that that's a code for emotions. Emotions. Makablim rak mechina sasaga the erb pnim the bina. Emotions. Um, receive um, the uh, emotions received energy from the internal comprehension or pnim, internal comprehension, the bina of bina, shini crime aim abanim, that's considered the mother of the children because it has a intimate connection to the children, the children are our emo the emotions. She asni crime afrechem, the emotions at that point in time, when they're still intimately connected with the comprehension, they call considered small little chicks. However, when a person has great, is in a state of expanded thinking, then what happens is the emotions become hidden. And they sort of, the, the great comprehension um, is when a person taps into the makif, the greater power, the greater power of Bina. And the emotions are sort of not, there's emotions, but they're not sort of, they're not, not, not recognizable. And so the mother is basically sitting. Maybe it means sitting on the eggs because they're not, not revealed. 
What really, what really we want to do is we want to bring down from higher than comprehension and bring it down into the emotions. And this whole concept is like love dependent on something. Now, usually that love dependent on something there's an emotion of love which is actually internally fit when that thing that was causing the love disappears the emotion the love also disappears nevertheless the love still remains in a hovering state that that is basically still the that thing got hidden so the love is still hidden but the love can still come back with error and to be awakened love and can come in an opening in a revealed way so what what you know there's a famous story in in tanakh where the love of two people was because she was attractive and and when that wasn't there, the whole complicated story, how that wasn't accessible anymore, wasn't meaningful to him anymore, then the love wasn't there. The love disappeared. Now, he's saying over here that the love just went into a sleeping state and it could be awakened again. In other words, the love is basically goes into the the hovering comprehension and the way this hovering comprehension settles on somebody is actually a square it's like it's like a blanket on top that really sits on top like it's written in a different place oh i need to see further is it possible to to lift up the page Rabbi Smith. Hello? 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 Oh, hello? 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so basically, the way uh, this this uh, bina impacts emotion is that it is li literally like a blanket. Um, from Mishnah like it's written like in another place, being in mem. De la Marbe, regarding that pasuk which which breaks the rules which the mem in the middle of a, of the word is actually written like a mem at the end of a word a, a complete square mem and the general idea of the way this mechanism works is just like a brain the knowledge of a brain basically it, it, it's sort of like it surrounds the idea that it knows. <laughs> Even though it's it's separated from this idea, nevertheless, <laughs> the knowledge basically of it surrounds this idea. Uh, 
just like God knows everything that he's uh, individually um, inspecting every single creation, we diazul magnify someone with this knowledge, awareness. See it, that's what it is. Awareness. Awareness is surrounding the object. It's basically surrounding it. It says in Tanya, God knows all the world because he's aware of the whole world and, and it's basically inside him. And, uh, and this is like it says on top of the on top of the highest animals, not animals, the highest angels, is a rakia keina kerach. There's a rakia keina kerach, meaning to say a sky like ice. Now, what does that mean, a sky of ice? And the highest, these angels have a sky of ice. What does that mean? So, so it actually means something. This is referring to that the angels have a, um, that the angels have a awareness and that surrounds them, their, their, their internal awareness. In other words, there's two types of awareness, something that I'm aware of in a cognitive way right now, in a conscious way, and there's a, a, just a more of a general awareness which straight establishes the context. So, and basically that is an external close of chashmal, which is electricity, which is not electricity. In modern Hebrew, in modern uh, Hebrew, they call electricity chashmal. But if you divide up, this is actually an ancient term, and chashmal basically means hash, which is like the English hash, quiet, ha, mal, talk, say words, mal, mal, mal. Words, you're saying words, hash, hash, like quiet, mal, to talk. Words spoken quietly, a whisper, hash, mal is a whisper, right? And what do you mean close? It means that when I am consciously thinking about something, my chitzenia's bina, my external comprehension, whispers to me directions. I'll say that one more time. It's a very interesting phenomenon that I have a conscious uh, awareness that I'm thinking about right now. Surrounding that conscious awareness is a context of the external bina, which hash mal, which whispers to my conscious mind and gives it direction on how to, what to focus on and where to go. I'll give you an example. If a person is in a um, dynamic, uh, a law enforcement is in a dynamic um, encounter where they have to unfortunately discharge their weapon. What usually happens is the brain creates tunnel vision in order that it can have um, target focus. It can have target focus, but the person is not aware of these surroundings anymore. And they may not know that there is a, another threat in the corner of the room because they can only see in front of them like a tunnel. So somebody else would need to um, scream to them or whisper to them. I don't know if they can hear either in a, such a, but they basically, somebody needs to tell them, look over there, look over there. There's another threat, right? Now that's in one situation, but also people themselves have found themselves in certain situations where their mother uh, mentor or an image of their father, mentor, grandfather, somebody uh, whispers in their ear and uh, tells them of their rabbi, or, 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 you know, and tells them some sort of statement of direction. That is a typical hash mal. So 
these highest angels, they are busy all day learning about divinity and God and, and, and they are totally, they're totally wowed and they spend the whole day praising God. And, but they also have this, this hashmal that they, this whisper that, that directs what they should be focusing on. And this is all explained in another place and regarding, could we turn the page? So these are different, three different components in the comprehension of uh, Bina. Ur is the light, which is the message that we want to convey in order to, you know, pe put people into the light. Mayim is a fluid, a fluid uh, medium in which to convey meaning, but, and rakia is the sky, but it really, we said already, it means ice. That means the water has taken on a concrete state in order to give a, um, a concrete definite medium for this light, for this idea. Ermaim rakia. And this is all in the comprehension of Vina. You have these three components, light, water, and frozen water, which is we call sky. It's called Rakia. Why it's called Rakia? Um, because it's a, Rakia is an interface, and the ice is frozen into a certain shape, which now will convey a meaning, like if it, the ice is frozen into certain letters, right? Before an idea is compre properly comprehended, it's even before it's limited to certain words, letters. The person is going, wow, I, I, I can't put my finger on it. I can't say it in words. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of starting to get it. It's like he's in a river and the idea is being delivered um, very fluid. Like you're explaining an idea, a deep, deep idea, amok, very deep. It's not, um, it's not limited in the brain in a certain, it's not, it's not put into something that could be typed into Twitter yet. Because that would be, a Twitter statement would already be uh, ice. That's, that's called ice, which means frozen water, it's concrete. So it's not, it's still like, like, not sure how to say it. Anikra saga. It's not con which 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 limiting in a brain is called reaching. It's called reaching. Mitfisa and holding, holding, to, reaching and holding. Who anikra mayim the And it, at this stage of comprehension, it's called moving waters. Love become a funim shading, and the waters can actually flow into different shapes, in, into different shapes, forming different letters in different ways, and it hasn't been there hasn't been a consensus of how to freeze this water into a concrete message. And this is not the case when you take an idea and you, and you grasp it and in a comprehended way in the, in the, in the mind, mamish, nimshal lekerach, the aglidi, maya, the kaima, then it's, it's, it's basically, um, it's it's compared to ice, which is a glitty, which is uh, a glitty is what glida is um, is ice cream, right? But that's ju that's a, just a modern term. The karach the aglidi basically means that the karach the aglidi, uh, like glida, means that it's basically hard. Maya, it's basically hard water. The kaiman, it's standing, it's able to stand on its own. It's not using it about the cold. It's it's just about the solid state. Um, Musag is like the idea of you're able to reach it and, and grasp it with your hand and you're able to hold it and you're able to deliver it when you can't hold water. Like it's written in another place. And this is what we call Rakia, sky, which is interface, which is really ice, which is solid and concrete, which is transferable and deliverable. That's the idea of 
ice that you can actually put it on the back of a wagon and deliver it. And this is what, what, what we mean that there's ice on top of the brains of the highest because the highest have this bank of comprehension, which is concrete, which they tap into. So the highest above their cognitive uh, aspects have this concrete bank of, of knowledge that they tap into. However, the source of this ice, which is basically concrete knowledge, uh, which actually comes in a specific, total, concrete, uh, transferable um, words, is actually higher than comprehend, internal comprehension. It actually comes down and becomes the context provider, the context provider, and that's what the closed mem is. The mem, closed mem provides context for the understanding. The context doesn't shine and it's not revealed unless you have a discussion about it. So the, the, the context, context is there and it doesn't... Um, it doesn't show itself in a revealed way, and it doesn't show itself in the emotions, even though it creates the context of the emotions. And that's why this context, uh, it becomes the sky or eyes, which is above the the moichin, the intellect of the emotions, the intellect of emotions is, is the, um, the the intellect which we, will trigger emotion. The hainu ba'em revetsas, and this is the whole idea of a mother. This is the code behind the idea of a mother sitting on the on the children, the mother ch mother chicken sitting on the mother bird sitting on the children, v'chein v'al gezalav, and also also when God says in hazinu. Um, God says in the in 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 the one of the parshas at the end of the Torah, Val Geza Gezalav Yerachev. God flies on top of the chickens on the on the little birdies. God, like a mama bird, flying on top of the baby birds. That's the relationship of God, and that's basically saying that God is like this provider of context for the our emotions. And this is the same idea as the close of the quiet of the of the whisper. The whisper protects the emotions, meaning to say that the mother says statements that are repeated again and again are very short and in the time of need when the brain doesn't know what to do it can always rely on those whispers that are recorded from the mother and you can remember what to do and then the emotions don't get out of hand for example always wash your hands after the bathroom or or uh, stop drop and roll that's a hashmal stop, drop, and roll. Uh, another hashmal is Yechi Adineinu, Yechi Amelach. That's, a, that's a, long live the king, is a, is a hashmal. It means a whole myriad of things. But it, it sort of put, establishes the context that we are sh uh, showing uh, allegiance to the king. And there's many, oh, you know what happens in firemen, right? The, the adrenaline in, in the fire causes a person to forget what they need to do if they in the fire. So they have a hashmal that they say, put the white stuff on the red stuff, put the white stuff on the red stuff so that when the emotion causes the fireman to move, the, the motion, the emotion, so the motion, the, the, the put the white stuff onto the red stuff protects the emotion that the emotion has some sort of guidance of where it's supposed to move. I'm not supposed to just stand here and do nothing. I'm supposed to take the white stuff and put it on the red stuff. And everything's, when the adrenaline hits, everything is forgotten. The brain doesn't work. The, the blood leaves the prefrontal cortex and goes to the central of the brain. So the person becomes like, like um, mindless, becomes a mindless human being. And yet the Hashmal kicks in and the Hashmal still talks and the Hashmal still tells the person, put the white stuff on the red stuff, turn off the fire. 
or stop, drop, and roll. Kamesha is bar, but some of the Indian and kidness area. And I'm going to explain more about this. He's saying regarding the clothes of leather. Ah, so what's clothes? Clothes basically means this silent, impactful um, phenomena. So the whisper into the brain is a sign, is like clothes. It's a silent, it stays around. And when, it, when it's needed, it comes in, it does its job. Shemakif Lazun. I mean, really, uh, you, you, Hashmal, you're supposed to have the whole Mishnayas as a Hashmal, the whole, the whole Chumash is a Hashmal. It, it, when, the, when the issue comes up, the, the Pasuk just, just comes up into the brain and, and you know what to do. Shemakiv Lazun. So this Hashmal surrounds the male energy and feminine en energy, Zun. It also is a carpet underneath the feet of Zun. Meaning to say that even the feet is the idea of Malchus, which is the idea of communicating to the next level down. And even there, Hashmal works. That actually becomes the Masach, which is the curtain between Atzillus and Bria because there needs to be some sort of mediary, medium in which to send the message further and, and Hashmal does the, does, the, does the job. Hashmal does the job and it allows the, the higher ideas to be delivered in a way that can be handled by the lower level, by the lower world. And this unbelievable whisper that surrounds comprehension and protects the emotions, even when the comprehension is not working, it actually comes from the source of Bina. And actually, the source of Bina is what allows the division of, of, of cognitive thought, of, of thought, which is called Metzaref. It's called Metzaref. Metzaref is the idea of bringing things that seemingly don't have meaning together and associating them with each other, that when we do this meaningless sound, it actually is uh, associated with something meaningful. But the actual words chosen is a lower level. That's the open mem, the revealed mem where the speech is uh, known and the author is is identified. It's not some hidden whisper coming from your, what your mother always told, taught you or what your father always taught you. This is open communication, open communication. But there's a whole network of things that are happening behind on the back end, a whole dynamic network of what's happening on the back end. And this helps us understand the oneness of God about what the back end of what we're seeing is, you're seeing a dynamic interface of many, many things happening in the divine world to produce the story that the, uh, the world that we live in has a dynamic, unbelievable back end of these various things of the makif of Bina and Bina, and then there's the, 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 the message is, is, is fluid and the, and the light is, is not specifically connected. And then the meth, 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 then it becomes crystallized, which is that's the idea of Rakia and Kerach and the crystallization. That's what it is, the crystallization above the head of the highest um, is the idea that happens in Bina. And then it becomes communicated it's a whole different story when something becomes communicated, yet the power of communication connects up to higher than comprehension that allows for abstract ideas to connect and then be crystallized and be delivered to others. And, and, and wow, this is, this is what we've been learning. Wow, you're Rabbi Chirik, thank you so much. And any questions in the chat? Let's see here. I don't see any questions. Anyone want to ask any questions? OK, 
Hey, thank you, Rabbi Chirik. Hey, you're welcome. We'll say a few words about the parsha. It's a shem. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna log on. I'm gonna connect up through a my phone. Perfect.